Hello, hello again. So this is GUI video number five. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do transparent GUIs. Uh, it's really cool because I use it to almost make it look like an item uh, menu. And I'll actually go ahead and start this time in this video by showing you my actual uh, menu. So I got assigned to my click wheel. I'm going to click that. And here's my GUI. It pops up with my mouse centered in the middle. And it's going to pop up wherever my mouse is. And I got a bunch of buttons here. And then I got the close so I can just hide it. All right, now we'll go ahead and jump into the code here. So the first line I got is that hotkey. When I click the middle button on my mouse, it's going to uh, perform all these actions. The first thing I want to do, I want to get my mouse coordinates, which is what these two lines are doing here. These are the variables where the XY is going to be stored. You can name these whatever you want. Just make sure that down in your GUI, you're putting the exact same thing in both the X and the Y. The next two lines, the reason I have these here is if I didn't have these and I went to go and open my um, GUI, it would actually open as if my mouse were up here and it would open it to the bottom right of the coordinates. I want it to be centered around my mouse with it being in the middle here. So you might have to play around with these until you get it perfectly centered. 80-80 worked for me and that just opens exactly around my mouse, which is what I like. Obviously, you can redesign this, uh, use a smart GUI editor out there. There's a lot of them that are pretty good. You know, if you want to add, you know, another row of buttons around the circle, that's perfectly fine. You know, go crazy if you want. So now to the GUI. So the first line I got here is my GUI destroy, obviously. That way, if I want to open it multiple times, I don't have to worry about any type of error being thrown if there's any type of variable in here being used. Not really important on this one because I'm not using any variables, but I always like to put it just in case I ever make a change. I, I don't want to forget that I need that and throw an error. This is going to be the background color. Uh, the hex code can be whatever you want as long as down here at the wind set it matches. Uh, that's changing your background color to whatever, you know, orange, purple, black, whatever. And then down here is where it's saying, okay, wherever this color exists, make it invisible. And that's why you can't see my background. So with this GUI, I just added, you know, all my buttons and everything. You know, you click here, do something. It's going to go to do this one, which is down here. So here's this handler. That's just going to destroy the GUI uh, because I don't want to see it once I want my action to be performed. And for now, I'm just using a message box. This is where you're going to want to put your code on the action you want to be performed. Whether it's, you know, sending uh, some text, opening a new tab, you know, whatever, resizing a window. So this is where you're got, you guys are really going to be focusing on putting your own personalized code. The next thing I got is uh, just kind of some of the settings for the GUI. Uh, the two important ones is the always on top. I always want that to, you know, be the main window here. So even if I open this and then I click on Notepad... I can go back to doing my work, and it's still going to be there. I like that just because in case I'm doing some work, and I'm like, oh, you know what, I, I need to push this. It's right there. Or you can, you know, just... Either way is good. It just adds a nice little variety to how you can uh, perform with that. Tool window, I get rid of that. The tool window is this uh, bar here at the very top with the name of your window, the minimize, maximize, and close out. Uh, if you want to leave that on there, you can. I like to hide it, but if you do hide it, make sure you add a close button because then you won't be able to close this without closing your script. And I got that right here. Go, close worn menu. That's going to jump down here, and all that's going to do is just a destroy for me with a return. Always make sure you put a return. If you forget to put a return, all this other code might run. These two buttons... You know, let's say I don't really have a use for them yet, so I'm just leaving them blank. I can click them all I want. They're not going to do anything. They're just there as placeholders for when I have an idea of what I want to have there. Plus, you know, it makes it look better being a perfect square. Uh, the last thing on the GUI here is I have the 50. That's just the name of the GUI. You don't have to, but it's useful when you're going to be having a script with multiple GUIs in it. 
You don't want to open two GUIs at the same time and have them kind of stepping on each other, um, sharing variables, whatnot. So you just name it and then just make sure you add it to anywhere where you're doing a GUI, uh, you know, something that controls it. So the destroy, just make sure you add that 50. It doesn't have to be a number. It can be a name. I could name this, you know, Tom's GUI 1, Tom's GUI 2, whatnot. Just make sure you put it on every line of code or that uh, specific button will not show up, which I can actually go ahead and show you. So let's say I forgot to put the 50 there. And then I'm going to go ahead and launch that again. And as you see, that's disappeared. And that's just because I forgot to put that 50 there. So put it back, and then it's going to be there again. Uh, if you don't want this opening at your mouse coordinates, you always want it maybe opening up here in the top left of your uh, screen. All you got to do is get rid of all this code right here. And then put actual coordinates down here, you know, your x, y. So 0, 0 is going to be the very top corner of your screen there. So that's perfectly fine, too, if you don't want it to follow your mouse around. Maybe you just always want it up there. I've done that before, and, you know, especially gaming. So then the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, contextual menus. Uh, you know, if you don't know what that is, go to your desktop, right-click. This is a context menu. And they're pretty much in any type of program. So let's say you want to make your own. There's two ways of doing this. You can make a tray one, which is what I got here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and move my screen so you can... There we go. So the context menu for the script is you're going to go down to your tray, hover over the one you want, right click, and you got this. So this is the one that it comes with standard, but let's say I don't want that. I want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to create menu item, comma, tray, no standard. That means get rid of the default stuff that's there. I don't want any of this there. I just want to do menu tray add, and I'm just going to add one. I'm just calling it item one. Item one. This is the handler. Make sure you put that there. It's going to do nothing. So when I click on this, it's going to go down here. I'm just going to get a message box saying hello there. So let's go ahead and try that out. Let me close out of these. I think I called it new one. And there we go. Now when I click it, all I got is that item one. Hello there. So you don't have to add this line here. What all that really does is when I click it, you see it's kind of hard to see, but there's a line here. It's a good way if you want to separate stuff. Uh, let's see if I can find an example. Yeah, here we go. If I want to separate uh, the menu into like categories, you can just add a line there. All you're doing is menu, comma, tray, uh, comma, add, like you are down here, but then you're just not adding any name or handler to it. So that's just a good way. You know, you can add them wherever. Let's try this as an example to show you a little better. And as you see there, I got, you know, one category and then item two. And they both do the same thing for now. But when you click on that, and it comes down here, you know, this is where you guys are going to be putting your code of what you want to be performed. Uh, you can put an exit there. Definitely strongly recommend that because I did not put an exit on here or exit app. So when I click on here, I have no way to close this anymore. So item two, honestly, I probably should name it, uh, you know, close out, close out handler. Oops, make sure you don't put spaces. And then down here, I can just put exit app. That way, I make sure I still have a way to close it since I have the no standard up here. Definitely want to do that. All right, I'm going to move my screen back. Hold on a second. All right, there we go. So now, let's say I want a context menu, kind of like that right click. I want to assign it to a hotkey, so I'm just going to have it as F1. And for this one, we're going to do menu, 
what is your menu called? Menu, uh, I'm just calling it my menu for now. This can be whatever as long as all of them match. And then uh, add, because I want to add an item to the drop down. Uh, what do you want it to actually say? I'm going to actually change this to, I'm just going to call it item 1 and item 2. Your handler, you know, when you click on this item menu, what's it going to do? It's going to come down here, message box, you pressed item 1. Then once again, this is where you guys are going to be manipulating your code to what you actually want it, the action to be performed. Uh, menu show. Uh, just make sure everything's named the same, you're good to go, and as I forgot here, definitely make sure you put a return, or this code down here would have actually ran. So let's go ahead and show you that. So I'm going to push F1, and I got this little menu. Item 1, item 2. So I'm going to push 2, you press item 2. Item 1, you press item 1. And this follows your mouse around uh, wherever you're going. So this is a really cool thing to do uh, if you're going to have a ton of hotkeys in your scripts. Maybe you don't want that many buttons on your keyboard being replaced by your auto hotkey scripts. This way you can create a menu where you can still access everything and um, just set the click of a single button. And these menus can be as long as you want. You can also add sub menus. And uh, another cool thing you can do is hotkeys with those two. So let's say I do A, B. So instead of me pushing F1 and then having to move my mouse down to B, item 2, I can actually click uh, F1 and then push B, and it's going to go straight to that. So you can even put hotkeys within your contextual menu to make it even faster, which is really helpful versus having to constantly move your mouse. Uh, you know, if you use it enough, it kind of comes second nature of where uh, after you click F1, what button you're pressing next. Uh, you can get really fast with that. All right, if you guys have any questions on any of the stuff I just showed you, definitely comment below. Let me know. Uh, maybe I'll expand a little bit on the next GUI video that I do. Uh, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot with uh, being able to see what you guys are really liking and what I should be doing next and covering and whatnot. And it also lets you know when I'm doing a new video. Just because I am sending out three to four videos lately uh, every week and I'm slowly getting more and more advanced. Um, so I hope to try to do some of those things that are a little bit more complex and harder to find answers out there on the internet. Alright guys, thank you and have a great day.